live. <laughs> sort of. So anyhow, we're going to talk about our trip into Laredo, Texas. Yeah. And from the beautiful city of San Luis Potosi. Right. Which was, what did I say? Shoot, I went out there to look at the mileage too. I think it's 539 miles mm -hmm. to get to where we are in San Antonio. And you want to talk? Yeah. So we debated back and forth about what route to take, whether it was going to be through Laredo and the way of Laredo or Piedras, Negras, one of the other places. Eagles Pass. That Eagles was. Pass. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we just decided to throw caution to the wind, I suppose, and uh, go through Nuevo Laredo into Laredo, Texas. Right. And we traveled with um, some subscribers of ours. Hey, Tim. Hey, Misty. And um. fellow YouTubers at it's T M capital M capital T Nestor. Yeah, small letters Nestor and right. E S T E R. Right. Yeah. So they're just starting mm -hmm. out a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So bling bling to them. So we did it in two legs. Um, our first night we stopped in Monterey, and I got to tell you, the scenery driving in Monterey is just absolutely beautiful. The mountains. And it is. The mountains are mm -hmm. stunning. Mm -hmm. They really are. And then the for the second leg of the trip, we finished driving from Monterey to where we are now in Texas. San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just outside of San Antonio, Texas. Um, and so that was quite a drive. The first day was pretty uneventful. About the, seven hours, I did the driving. The second day, I what did happened? The, oh, you know what? <laughs> Sometimes I am so tight, my ass squeaks when I walk. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I hate losing money. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Well, when we were still in Mexico today, Probably, I don't know how far out, maybe 40 minutes or mm -hmm. something like that before we came across the border crossing. I get nabbed by a pickup truck police with their lights going. The lights always go, so it's nothing to really, you know, panic about. But this time they were pulling me over and they were right behind me, mm -hmm. like tailgating me. And I wasn't going any faster than any of the other traffic. At all. In fact, there was cars that were passing me. But my car says uh, South Dakota, right? So, hey, that's easy prey. So, anyhow, they pull me over. He tells me that I was speeding. And, um, you know, there's no radar. There's no nothing to prove anything. And uh, it was a long day. So, um, he says it's 2,079 pesos. Okay? which is about 118 U.S. dollars. And uh, he says that I can go ahead and pay the ticket, blah, blah, blah. I go, where do I go? Where do I go to pay the ticket? And um, then he says, well, come over to my truck. So I go over to his truck. There's two guys in the front plus him that gets out, and he's the one that was talking to me. And he says, well, you can go ahead and pay now and just go ahead and sign the ticket, which it, it was on a pad. I don't know. Who knows, right? But, you know, it was a long day. It was hot. Mm -hmm. um, what am I going to do? I mean, they always say, get the ticket. Well, I don't know where to go. We're like 45 minutes from the border. Um, and we were caravanning with other people. We were caravanning, right, with, with Tim and Misty and their two cats. Um, so I went over back to the car and I talked to Mark and I told him, you know, this is the deal. What should I do? Should I go ahead and pay it? I mean, is it true? Wait, wait, I don't know. Um, you know, that's a lot of money. So we forked it out, and we gave it to him. I signed the ticket. Of course, no address, no copy, no nothing. Wink, wink. Right. So, um, and, and then, you know, there'll be those of you who say, oh, you shouldn't have paid it and, and stuff like that. But, you know, 
We need to get across the border. We were caravanning with people. It's already a stressful enough situation. Well, yeah, it was already a stressful enough situation. Um, so we just went ahead and paid it. He, I mean, he, didn't, he never told me where the place was that I could pay the ticket. You know, how far out of my way is it going to be from crossing the border? I don't know, honestly. So, yeah, you know, shame, shame on me. I don't know. I don't know what to do in that situation. Um, you guys always say, get the ticket. Well, he, he wrote it up, but he's like, well, you could just pay here. So I did it, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know. All right, so move on Extortion. To, yeah. Uh, move on to number issue two. number two. <laughs> issue number two. Um, number two, we went to the, what is it? An Iguana. Iguana office. That's where you go to get your tip back. And our friends, Misty and Tim, they just drove through like this little booth area gave them their paperwork or whatever, maybe their charge card and whatever, they'll get reimbursed from their tip that they ended up paying. Well, my tip was a little bit more complicated. Um, what happened was I used a charge card when I uh, got my tip. I had a tip once. We, we, I renewed for three more years, so your tip has to match your visa. So I hired a facilitator um, to go ahead and do that for me. All the paperwork was sent in, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then she gave me a copy of a screen, the facilitator back then, that showed that it went until November of 2023. Okay? Even though my original paperwork right here, there's the receipt showing that it went. Um, even though my receipt right here, it's all written out, all that stuff, blah, 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 blah. It was... 9,879 pesos and 79 cents that I ended up paying October of 2020, okay, for my tip. So um, she says, and she spoke English, and she was telling me that I needed a letter. And they don't let, only one person can go up to the window, mm -hmm. only one. So I couldn't take Mark, and I couldn't take Tim with me. I had to do it. So, and that's fine. And so I explained to her, because she did speak good English, that, you know, here's my paperwork, here's all my documentation, all the pages that are in here, everything that's in here, um, with all the information, everything that they need. And uh, she's saying that this piece of paper right here, which shows originally that it expires November of 2020. She says that, she goes, well, do you have your letter? I said, what letter? I have this. I have everything that I have. I've got the receipt. I've kept everything together. I've got a copy of the screen print that shows that it goes until November of 2023. <clears throat> and she says, no, I can see that. I see it in the computer. I said, great. Well, then I'd like to get reimbursed. But my problem is, is that it, goes, it needs to go on a different credit card than the one I have. That one's been canceled. And she goes, well, I need a letter. And I go, what letter? And she says, the letter that you should have gotten when you renewed it. I never got a copy of the letter from my facilitator. So I went ahead and stepped aside, sat down, told Mark what was, Mark what was going on, called her, and I explained to her she was taking a conference call. She couldn't talk. She couldn't be on it for an hour. Mm -hmm. Everybody was pretty hot. It was, what, like 103 or something. Yeah. It was pretty hot. They had their air conditioning running for their cat, sitting in their car, mm -hmm. waiting for me, where there was just a breeze. Um, and she's like, well, I'll have to call you back, Paula. It's, a, it's an hour uh, conference call that I have with one of my clients. Well, you know, we kind of talked, and we just said, Forget it. Forget it. Mm -hmm. So we did. So, okay, so this is what I walked away from today. I walked away from uh, 2,079 pesos, which comes out to be $118. And then I walked away from 9,879 pesos, which is approximately $561. Mm -hmm. Total of $588. Am I happy about that? No. I hate losing money. And basically she told me that uh, if I don't have that letter, I can just forfeit the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, $568 is not chunk change. 
That's yeah. that's a lot of money. I mean, I have to buy a lot of bags of dog food. That's how I look at yeah. everything. So that's five hundred eighty-eight dollars I'm out today driving to the U.S. So that's my so, complaint. The good news is we were not kidnapped. Kidnap, we were not kidnapped by cartels or anything bad like that. Yeah. We just lost that, money in just, other ways. Yeah, right. <laughs> Right, right, and we and we did everything preparing for if we did uh, get stopped by the cartels, only because ooh, did I just break that? I think I did. Nope, I've already pre-broken. I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyway, I'm at a friend's house right now. I'm at one of my subscribers' house in San Antonio, and she's at my house. Mm -hmm. Um, So. yeah, uh, what is it called? What's that? Retire in Mexico, no bull, Ernie. Mm-hmm. He's been putting out videos, probably about four of them, three at least, where he talks about the cartel activity, going through Matalala, going through uh, Laredo, people being stopped, trucks going across mm-hmm. the road, all that stuff. For la, 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 la. I don't want to hear it, but I watched him. We're happy to report. None of that None happened. None of that happened. Us. None of that happened no. at all. But I did take also precautions right. on hiding my money, hiding things, right. getting a fake wallet, right. putting it in the car, Mark's right. old cell phone going on the console. That doesn't yeah. work. Just yada yada yada, you know, yeah. preparing. No. Money in my shoe, all that. That's a good video yeah, he does. security and, and stuff like that. And we did follow a lot of the stuff that he suggested. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying my experience and what I was expecting. Coming across, I wasn't sure going through Mapuala. Um, but no problems. Mm-hmm. No problems at all. No issues. So thank you, Lord, for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's the way that goes. So we got through the board, and where's the first place we ate at? Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Keep that thought. No problem. Yeah. So you stopped it. Uh, Taco Bell only to discover that prices have gone up quite a bit. Well, that was Misty's idea. However, that was also Misty's idea. Paulette was able to get one of those wish list items from a few videos ago. Look at this! Look at it! A bag full of. Mild Taco sauce! Bell, mild sauce. I was so happy. I went up to the counter after we had ordered. We had eaten our food and we were going to get everything back up. Hey, could you do me a favor? He goes, sure. I get. Could you? Can I have a bag? So he gets a bag. I said, could you do me another favor? I said, can you fill it up with your mild sauce for me? Because I live across the border in Mexico and I love your sauce and I can't get it there. Sure. So this so, is my sauce I can take back. And I'll probably make another stop before I go back. So basically this mild sauce cost us $568. Yeah, this is ex- expensive mild sauce yeah. if you want to look at it that way. Right? But, yeah. you know, I figure I'll stop at another Taco Bell, get another handful like this. And, yeah. eh, you know, hopefully it'll last me uh, the next nine months before we have to drive back to the U.S. again. Yeah. So how much were the tolls? The tolls were... Twenty-seven dollars and right. five cents. Right, and I have to say that we got the uh, passe from Oxo, which really Oxo. made it pretty convenient. Yeah, um, yeah, and Mark put like fifteen hundred pesos on it. Yeah, which is about eighty bucks. Yeah, and so far we've only spent twenty-seven. I was really impressed with how little it was in tolls because yeah. when we came from. Tucson into Mexico that uh-huh. time from Arizona. The way that we went, we went along the along the coast, along the coast, and that, mm-hmm, that ran us about three hundred in tolls. I remember that because it's money that I don't like to spend. Remember, that's three hundred U.S. U.S. dollars in tolls. Yeah, yeah that, so it, that it ended up coming to. That was pretty expensive. So, yeah, I would recommend uh, definitely getting the Oxo Passe. I, um, I think Tim said you could get it at a mobile station, too. They got yeah, theirs at a mobile station. They had another kind of a, a pass, but it was really pretty convenient. You just drive Super up. Super convenient. I get, should show them what it, it looks like. It goes up and you go through. One difference we did notice is that when you're paying cash, you mm-hmm. get a receipt. Whereas if you're using the, uh, the passe, 
you don't get a receipt. You but don't get a receipt. What you do get is a, a notification on your phone that... Um, is that still going? Okay, I heard a noise. It's probably my phone. <laughs> yeah. So, but what you do get is a notification on your phone. It tells you how much you paid, where where you paid it at. Which is it one through of the, the app that you get it? Yeah, the app on That's your phone. That's pretty cool. So... So he could check to see also, and it didn't take too long. The last one I think took a little bit longer than the others. Yeah, for for some reason, but so it was it really very convenient. Um, but yeah, so I would just like you know if you're driving towards the border, just be very aware of your environment, take all the safety precautions, watch Ernie's videos, hide stuff. That's yeah. precautions. Hide stuff. Right. Watch. Uh, Ernie, retired, uh, retired in Mexico, Noble, watch his videos. Uh, and in, also on the road in Mexico is another one. A lot of people yeah. ask questions, tell yeah. about their experiences. In fact, we might go ahead and make a little uh, comment on there, on, our, um, yeah. on yeah. our travel here today. Okay, another thing that we want to talk about is we slowed down several times yeah. in spots. And, of course, I'm kind of like... <gasps> Is something going on with cartels? Are they coming around yeah. with a gun or whatever and holding it to people and asking for their money and all that stuff? I didn't know what was going on. But you know what? I didn't freak out either. I think because I did such a good job at hiding everything that they wouldn't find it and kind of like a fake out with the yeah. fake wallet, fake cell phone, yeah. stuff like that. Um, but it was, and it was road construction. We mm -hmm. ran into that several times. There's mm -hmm. a lot of road work actually yeah. coming here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I did... Kind of think, hmm, what's a slowdown? But I got to say, I was really proud of myself for not freaking out. Mm -hmm. I, I really never did. I never let uh -huh. it get to me. I just had in the back of my mind, I probably didn't share with Mark at the moment, but it was kind of like, what am I going to do if they come up to the window like with a gun? I've never had a gun held by my face before. Yeah. You know, that thought did cross my mind. And of course, I didn't want to say it because I don't want to speak it in, mm -hmm. you know, out there. I don't want to say those words. But um, it was all good. Nothing yeah. ever happened. So, yeah, really pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, and I and I feel really blessed. Mm -hmm. Really blessed. Even though I lost five hundred and eighty-eight U.S. dollars, I still feel very blessed that we made it here with yeah. no issues. Yeah. So, as always, from the two travelers in Mexico. What she did. Bye, guys. Bye.